After a thorough validation and assessment process, we have successfully launched our COVID-19 vaccine program at Brook Army Medical Center. We safely received and administered our first COVID-19 vaccines to our BAMSI frontline staff on 17 December, starting with members of our intensive care unit and emergency department teams. It's incredibly exciting to be involved in this historic national effort to stop the spread of COVID-19. On 11 December, the FDA issued the first emergency use authorization, or EUA, for a COVID-19 vaccine. This EUA enables U.S. citizens ages 16 and older to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine trials have not finished studying the safety and efficacy for children, and manufacturers are not yet asking the FDA for authorization to vaccinate children. Drugs and vaccines have to be approved by the FDA to ensure that only safe and effective products are available to the American public. In situations such as this one, when there is good scientific reason to believe that a product is safe and is likely to treat or prevent disease, the FDA may authorize its emergency use under specific circumstances. It's important to note that vaccines authorized for emergency use are offered on a voluntary, not mandatory basis. Since we are so early in the vaccination process, the nation has a limited supply of vaccine. The DOD will first focus on those providing direct medical care, as well as those maintaining essential national security and installation functions, deploying forces, and beneficiaries at the highest risk for developing severe illness from COVID-19. Per this guidance, BAMSI has started its program with personnel in Tier 1 and will expand to other prioritized groups once we complete the first group. Tier 1 includes inpatient and outpatient health care and support, emergency services, and public safety personnel. We will provide advanced notification and instructions for our staff prioritized to receive the vaccine. Please keep in mind there is limited vaccine availability, and a phased approach will enable us to focus on those populations who are most in need of COVID protection. We are keeping our valued military beneficiaries in mind as we work through this process and will be sure to provide updated information as we are able. Prioritized DOD personnel are highly encouraged to take the vaccine to protect their health, their families, their community, and to lower the public health risks associated with this terrible pandemic. If you have volunteered to receive the vaccination, you will be notified through your department as the vaccine becomes available. Upon arrival at the vaccination site, you should bring or will be asked to fill out a DHA Form 207, the COVID-19 screening and immunization documentation. Please remember to bring your CAC. Please be sure to tell the vaccination provider about all of your medical conditions to include if you have any allergies, have a fever, have a bleeding disorder or on a blood thinner, are immunocompromised or are on a medication that affects your immune system, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, are breastfeeding, have received another COVID-19 vaccine. The Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine will be given to you as an injection into the muscle. You will receive a second dose of this same vaccine three weeks later to complete the vaccination series. If you already had COVID-19, you are encouraged to still get a vaccine. Because duration of immunity following COVID-19 is unknown, the vaccine may be effective in protecting previously infected people. Please keep in mind that you will need to remain in the vaccination area for at least 15 minutes post-vaccination for observation. As a reminder, vaccines fight disease by producing an immune response within the body. Sometimes that means flu-like symptoms, such as aches and pains, headache, and a low-grade fever that may occur after being vaccinated. This is normal and a sign that your body is creating an immune response to protect you from COVID-19. It is not possible to get COVID-19 from vaccines. Vaccines against COVID-19 use inactivated virus, parts of the virus, or a gene from the virus. None of these can cause COVID-19. I know that some people may have concerns regarding COVID vaccines, but I am confident they will prove to be a game changer in our fight against COVID. The vaccine approval process may seem swift, but I want to assure everyone that the review process has been incredibly comprehensive with all the data made available to peer review, to an independent working group, and to the Food and Drug Administration. The process has been open to the public, transparent, and reassuringly highly rigorous. If you have questions, it's important for you to make up your own mind, and I encourage everyone to review these facts for themselves. For background, vaccines and therapeutics to prevent and treat diseases are developed in stages. 
In phase one trials, researchers test an experimental drug or treatment in a small group of people for the first time. In phase two trials, the experimental drug or treatment is given to a larger group of people to see if it is effective and to evaluate its safety further. In phase three trials, the experimental study drug or treatment is given to very large groups of people. Researchers confirm its effectiveness, monitor side effects, compare it to commonly used treatments, and collect information that will allow the experimental drug or treatment to be used safely. We have a vaccine that represents an incredibly effective and safe solution that exceeded all of our initial expectations, performing well in all ages, all demographic groups tested, and with 95% efficacy. When it's my turn, I will be in that line with my sleeve rolled up. We want to ensure our patients, service members, staff, and families fully understand the process as we distribute and administer the vaccine in the days ahead, starting with the prioritized groups. In the meantime, we need every member of this team to remain safe and healthy to accomplish the mission. The vaccine supply is limited and pandemic risks continue. We will still need to wear face coverings, practice physical distancing, avoid large gatherings, and wash hands or hand sanitize often to limit the spread of the virus. We will continue to recommend safety measures for everyone until the pandemic risk is substantially reduced. But the COVID vaccine program is already providing a promising start to the new year. We are helping to turn the tide on this pandemic. It is my hope that we will look back at this time as the beginning of a return to normalcy as we safely and efficiently roll out the vaccine program at BAMSI.